Hello everyone. Today we are going to look at Mathematics from 3, Chapter 3, Consumer Mathematics, Savings and Investments, Credit and Debt. And one of the subtopic is about solving the problems involving the use of credit card. So we try to look at one of the examples provided in your textbook on page 76. So all the details there, are, I'm breaking it down into the slide shows that I'm going to show you now. So, Inja Ahmad received his credit card statement for January 2019 from Bank Sentosa. By referring to the timeline, it's around February time when he received the statement of a January. The statement shows that Inja Ahmad has a current amount of 5,200, which is called as an outstanding balance. Before he received the statement, Inja Ahmad already spent uh, 5,200 before this and this amount will become an outstanding balance once the bank issue the statement to Inja Ahmad. So in short it means that during this period here Inja Ahmad is still owing the bank 5,200. So uh, in our case here it is assumed that Inja Ahmad did not use his credit card the whole February so after Inja Ahmad received the statement, the bank will give him a certain period of time which is usually around 20 days where he will not be charged with an interest. So this period of time of 20 days, we call them interest-free period. So Inja Ahmad have to settle the debt within this period of time. So that leads us to case 1 where if Inja Ahmad pays all his debt, which is 5,200 during this period, the bank will not charge him any interest. Means he clear his debt. That is the best case scenario. But what if Inja Ahmad cannot settle the debt within the interest fee period? This leads us to case number two. So in case two, if Inja Ahmad cannot settle all the debt within this period, he will at least have to pay the minimum amount, which we call minimum payment, during this period of 20 days. So how do we know how the amount of the minimum payment? We need to calculate. So the minimum payment is the 5% of the total balance. The total balance here means the amount that you owe the bank yeah, from the statement. So Inja Ahmad has to pay 5% in the form of fractions, 5 over 100, times the amount that he owed the bank, which is the balance, and it is 260. Notice that it's stated here, or a minimum of 50. Means that whichever is the higher amount, he has to pay the higher amount. So in this case, 260 is higher than 50. It's larger, so he has to pay this amount. If this amount is less than 50 ringgit, then he has to pay at least, and the minimum payment will be 50 ringgit. So if the 5%, which is the 260, is less than 50, then the minimum payment will be 50. So after, uh, we're still in case 2, so after Inja Ahmad pays the minimum of 260 only, so the balance will bring forward. So now, after the interest-free period, a finance charge will be imposed on the balance in this 15 days. So this 15 days is stated in the example in the textbook. So how are we going to calculate this? First, since he paid 260 only, 5,200 the initial amount which he owed the bank minus RM260. This is the latest balance. So this balance of 4,940 will be charged with the interest after the interest fee period. So how are we going to calculate this? The 15 days will be charged with 18% per annum. So by using the formula, interest charge will be the outstanding amount, the amount that he still owe the bank after he paid the minimum payment, times 18% per annum. So 15 over 365, when you multiply all this, you get 
the interest charge, which is the finance charge is 36.54. So after the 15 days, a new statement will be issued in which Inja Ahmad will receive the latest outstanding balance in February. So what is the total amount? The outstanding amount in February is the outstanding balance plus the interest. So outstanding balance is the amount which he still owe the bank, which is 4940 after he paid the minimum payment, plus the interest that we just calculated, 36.54. Hence, the total is 4976.54. Now, what if Inja Ahmad missed the payment or didn't pay at all, means he didn't pay the minimum payment as well? This will lead us to the case three. Where during the interest free period, Inja Ahmad didn't pay or pay less than the minimum amount, 260. So different charges will be imposed on Inja Ahmad. So after the interest free period, since Inja Ahmad didn't pay at all, the outstanding amount after this period is still 5,200 the initial amount. So this 5,200 will be charged with a finance charge of 18% over the 15 days after this, over the 15 days. So the interest charge will be 5,200 times 18% times 15 days of over 365, which is 38.47. This is similar to case two, but what is different to case two is that in Ahmad will be charge a different type of charges which is called as the late payment charge so the late payment charge is either 10 ringgit or one percent of the total outstanding balance uh, whichever higher so the late payment charge here is the one percent of the total outstanding balance means the outstanding balance plus the interest charge which is 1%, 1 over 100 of the outstanding balance of 5,000 plus the interest and you get 52.38. So we compare this 52.38 and the 10 ringgit here. So whichever has a higher value, higher amount, that will be charged on Mr. Ahmad. So 52 of course is higher than 10, hence 52 will be charged on Mr. Ahmad. Hence, the total outstanding balance he will receive after the 15 days here, he will, uh, which is around the month of March, the outstanding balance is 5,200 because he didn't pay at all, the interest charged to 5,200, and the late payment charge, which is 38 and 52.38. Hence, the total is 5,290.85. So the, uh, these are the three cases that might happen and how we calculate the balance. Thank you.